What is going on, lads? Jack here, and welcome to episode 92 of The Road to Glory now. Getting pretty close to that 100 episode mark. Huge thank you for your support, guys, as always. Also approaching 200 videos in total. I'm going to have a special video up for 200 videos. Uh, it's basically going to be a big pack containing some useful search filters, stuff like my Jack's custom view that I use for viewing my squad. Um, there's also going to be search filters for each role of a player, uh, a football club. Um, I'm hoping to get permission to distribute my skin. That's still a little bit kind of might happen, might not. And there'll also be a useful links notepad document where you can open it and it'll have links to my stadium mega pack, my face pack, all that stuff. So it'll basically be a big pack where you can just go and get everything you could ever need for FM. And so if anyone ever asks me again, what's my skin? Or how do I do this? How do I do that? And it's in there. I'm just not going to reply to them because I get the question a hundred times a day and I can't be dealing with it. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. If you've got any specific su suggestions for stuff that I might not have yet considered to include in the pack that you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a really useful thing for you guys. I really do. But anyway, moving swiftly on into today's game, we're going to be playing Manchester City, but since the, the previous episode, there's been a number of games to tell you guys about. Of course, the last episode was the 1-0 loss to Man U. Uh, it's now been another two months, and we are now at the end of December, um, and we have a tough tie against Manchester City. So, first things first, look at the fixtures. All in all, not, not a bad set of results, I suppose. Three draws, three wins, and three losses. You know, that's mid-table form, and that's looking like it's where we're going to be come the end of the season. A few really good standout results in there, though. So kicking things off this kind of sequence of results, we got a 2-2 draw against QPR. This game was a, it was an interesting one. You know, we took the lead. They pegged us back before half time. In the second half, we really turned the screw and really performed out of our skin. But we just couldn't quite break them down in the end. And ultimately, 2-2 was the only go kind of score we could muster. Gauthier, though, the French centre-back, grabbing a goal for us. Really good for him. He's been grabbing a few of late, and he's been a, a solid player at the back, and he's still only 21. So that was a good way to start off the results, uh, kind of considering that we'd lost the previous... Uh, well, we'd lost four of our last five games and conceded 11 goals in two of them. On the back of this, we were able to take the good kind of result against... QPR and grab a 2-0 win against Blackburn. Sergio Sampa this time getting two goals from uh, kind of centre mid playing defensively. He had a superb performance. Barboza as well playing well. Um, I've actually had a, been kind of fiddling with the system a bit. So uh, what I have done is um, this is how I'm lined up now. I should point this out. This is a 4-1-4-1, which is what I want to try out against Manchester City because I've been told this formation is quite good and I have the players for it. Uh, but I've also been playing the 4-4-2 that I've usually been playing but the other kind of formation that's been one I've been playing with has been kind of um, it's been like this so basically playing um, a 4-3-3 three, three with an anchor man but it hasn't really gone good for us so I've decided to maybe either stick with the 4-4-2 four, four, or for games like this against Man City I want to see how we perform with this kind of um, tactic you know see if we play well because uh, I feel like this formation could work pretty well against teams where we're not expected to do so well. So anyway, that's that. Uh, cracking back on with the fixtures, however, on the back of the win against Blackburn, we got a 0-0 draw against Liverpool at home. Good little result in the end. Uh, fairly 50-50 game. Bit of a bored draw, but a draw that I certainly took with kind of a very good... Uh, what's the word? I, I was happy with the result, essentially. Both teams had superb defensive de performances, and ultimately neither attack could break down the opposition uh, defence. So, 0-0 against Liverpool at home, I was fairly content with that. So, on the back of kind of three games unbeaten, we went to Southampton, and I was kind of thinking, you know, we beat them last year in the same fixture, we should have a chance here. And in the end, we lost 3-1. Um, it was a really comfortable win for them. Kieran Sefton and Shane Barney grabbing the goals for them, obviously. Shane Barney, former player, also missed a penalty. Uh, Shane Barney, so far this season, nine goals in 12 games for Southampton. Uh, kind of regret in selling him, I suppose. And the other player grabbing the goals for Southampton was this guy, Kieran Sefton. He's actually someone who I asked on Twitter, should I sign this guy in the summer for £35 million? Everyone told me, don't sign him. 
I now kind of regret that because him and Barney have been tearing it up this season and he's actually improved since when I was looking at him in the summer. So if you're one of the people on Twitter who told me not to buy him, I blame you for that loss. <laughs> but no, you know, 3-1 wasn't a bad result. At least we got a goal, I suppose. And on the back of this, we took uh, the little bit of momentum we had kind of from the previous four games and we got a 4-0 win against Cardiff away. Really good performance. Uh, Colin Barley with the uh, hat trick, superb poacher. This guy, really love him. Uh, he's not been grabbing as many goals as perhaps I'd like, but his average rating's been a 7.06. Uh, he's got a four-year deal at the club, and he's happy at the club at the moment, which is good to see. And Sergio Sampa grabbed his fourth goal in three games um, this match, which is kind of odd because obviously he's the defensive midfielder. So for him to grab a few like he has done in the last few set of kind of fixtures was kind of odd to see. Unfortunately, that 4-0 win is pretty much where the kind of good results ended for at least a short period of time. 1-1 draw against Newcastle was a little bit disappointing. We dominated the game, conceded late. Just another one of those games where we just had to see it out for the three points and ultimately one point is not as good as three and could cost us come the end of the season. And then two disappointing and incredibly disappointing defeats to Reading and West Brom. Uh, here we have Reading game. We, we were 1-0 up in this game and then Bokal missed a penalty when it was 1-1. They went up the upper, other end and scored. Again, another game we dominated. We kept possession well. Garfield Thompson getting out of the match here. He was playing the anchorman role when I was playing the 4-3-3. Obviously, he's been at the club for a number of years now. Came for 5k in 2019, so that was four years ago. He's now 22. He's still a very quality player and a lot of teams are interested in him. Uh, but he's been performing well as the anchorman of the squad and I'm going to try and stick with him because I feel as if he's got a lot to offer. So that result was bad, and then as I said, going away to West Brom, we lost 1-0 again. This game, really 50-50 game, another one of those games where we could have won it on another day. Ultimately we conceded and then we couldn't get a goal back into the game. Um, disappointing attacking performance really was what let us down here. Um, but no, another one of those games where, who knows, a win would have been on the cards and I kind of would anticipate a win, but it didn't happen for us. Fortunately for me, bit of good news and a light at the end of the tunnel came with the 1-0 win against Chelsea in the previous game. They had a sending off in the, early on in the first half. We used that to our advantage. We bossed the game in truth and in the end Gary Quirk gab, grabbing the goal for us to make it 1-0. And that's one of his first goals at the club. So I was very happy for him to get that goal. He struggled to break into the first team Gary Quirk, especially with me kind of fiddling with the formation and stuff. Uh, but good to see him grab a goal there and hopefully he can take that going forward. So, looking at the squad, uh, as I said for today's game, we line up with a 4-1-4-1. Uh, fairly solid team, pretty much full strength. Going to go with um, Pavlenko, obviously the Ukrainian goalkeeper who we signed uh, for £25 million. Big transfer, but he's performing OK at the moment. Uh, he, he's been a solid player. And then at the back we have Nazarov, uh, Russian right-back. Looks a bit like a woman. Uh, and then in centre-back, obviously, we have Pablo, loyal servant to the club. And then uh, Gauthier, the French uh, influential monster at the back. Insane mentals, this guy. I love him. Going to be a hot prospect, I'm sure. And then at left back, we have Ranjik, the Serbian at left back. Lacks the defensive properties, but he's a very physically strong and speedy wing back who, once he gets that technical side of his game perfected, he's going to be a real beast for us at the left back. Been playing him a lot this season, you know. I want to get players like this guy playing first team football. Already nine league appearances for us. You know, it's one of these things where the best way for a player to develop is to play him regularly. I mean, looking at this back five, uh, I could see all of them, with the exception of maybe Pablo, uh, performing there for at least the next four or five years. And so, gelling them from this very young age is critical in that. Looking at the uh, kind of midfield, obviously, got Thompson, who I've already covered, the Jamaican monster. And then alongside him, just slightly ahead, Zampa and Bokal, who Zampa today is going to be playing ball-winning midfielder in this new kind of tactic I want to try out. He kind of has good defensive stats. I feel as if it's a role that he can play adequately. His bravery somewhat lets him down, but he's a very technically and mentally gifted player to try and at least play this role today. Bob Bokal, we're going to be playing as a deep line playmaker. I want to try and keep the core of the team really solid. Obviously, Bokal for a number of years has played advanced playmaker. Today, I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to play with two attacking wide midfielders either side of this solid kind of three in the centre, and then uh, Cullen Barley up front on his own. And it should be interesting to kind of see how the team cope. But again, Bokal, he can play the midfield deep line playmaker role well. He's the kind of player who can pick out a pass. And I mean, looking at those stats, you can see them there. He is suited to this role. I mean, Bokal can playing anywhere in the centre and he's going to do a job right mid we're going to go with Quirk 
uh, as our right mid today. Physically strong, obviously. English player, grabbed a goal fairly recently. His goal-scoring record for England is superb. Looking for him to really make his mark running up and down the line in an attacking role, and then Jacko on the other side, another attacking winger. Hopefully he can do something in the wide midfield role. It's his natural position. I'm looking forward to seeing can he do something there, because for a, a while I've kind of fiddled with him in various different positions. He has superb stats, though, to at least attempt to play that role. And then up front, as I've said, we've got Colin Barley, uh, the Ivory Coast uh, international striker. See if he can do some work today for us as the poacher. Uh, up front on his own, which is going to be interesting, but it's going to be a bit of a test for him, I think. Uh, a few things in the squad to report on, really. Uh, a few players have been promoted from the reserves. Uh, these two players, Roman Fomin, uh, centre back. He's been in the reserves for a little while. I kind of feel as if now he's the second, kind of the third best centre back in the club. Uh, I have rotated him slightly um, with uh, Pablo in recent games, as I do want to get him playing a bit more first team football. And the other player to be promoted is Luis Enrique. This guy has improved bags recently. He's been sat in the reserves for a number of years. Uh, came to the club um, actually at the start of this year for 1.9 million because I had to wait um, for the um, what to call it for the uh, transfer window and stuff and for him to be old enough but now he's here he's a superb young player he's developed lots in the first team especially his speed and physical stats are going through the roof that's just regular reserve team football helping him there and hopefully he can make his mark today playing for us uh, if he needs to off the bench so, that is our squad for today's game. Going to see what we can do here. Um, the likes of Sabata are sat out for this game, but I'm hoping the players who we have got here are going to be able to do some work for us. Uh, the only really other thing to report is the fact that Zorak and Barboza are yet to score goals, and I've also arranged a few transfers which will be happening in just a few days' time. Uh, a few big ones as well, you know, players going out for decent money. So, we have Winkerchkov. He is going for £8.5 million pounds to West Brom, came in on a free on a Bosman, six months on, you know, selling him on for £8.5 million, good little bit of money there, he came in as a backup centre mid, wanted first team football, teams were interested in him, I've sold him to West Brom, a team who really aren't a rival for us in terms of, I guess, battling for the uh, UEFA Cup spots once we up our game, and so I feel as if that's a good transfer. transfer. We have Casco going to Vasco. He's a young striker, but he's like he, he doesn't fit in with the system. I've got a lot of better, younger striker prospects coming in. This guy, at best, will be kind of a, a, a top Premier League striker, but he's a bit of a gamble and a player who, I mean, cashing on him while I can, send him away to Brazil. He's not going to be a threat there. Who knows, maybe in five years' time he'll be at Real Madrid and I'll be kind of kicking myself. But for now, I'm content with £2.5 million for him. And last but not least, Zorak going for £14.5 million to Bayern Munich. This guy not really performed amazingly recently. Came in a few years ago for £7.25 million. Never really left a mark on the first team. Obviously, he went on loan to Udinese last year and played a bit of first team football. This year, with me playing free up front, he's had a bit more of an opportunity to play there. However, I have got a real abundance of strikers and he was the one who, out of all my strikers, I thought, in terms of get the money I could possibly get for him, he was the one who I'd kind of prefer to cash in on and his sale is going to free up a bit of funds along with the other two guys to potentially either expand the stadium or get a few new faces in so good little bit of business there you know turning what was oh blimey i'm trying to work it out now about nine million pounds worth of bought in players uh going to be going for like a total of oh, 26 million so nice little bit of profit there more than doubling my money obviously wet players wages go into that but nevertheless you know these players have played a little bit here and there and to get that kind of money for them is really good uh and a lot of wage budget and a lot of transfer budget available for potential bosmans coming in but anyway, that is pretty much everything. Lots of detail there. Let's crack it on straight away into this game. Going to be a tough game against Man City. Uh, setting up in a manner which I feel as if should offer us good defensive kind of solidity with the potential to maybe hit them on the break. Looking at past meetings, we've played quite well against Man City in the grand scheme of things. Three wins, one draw and four losses. Considering kind of 
who we are, the position we're in, that's a pretty decent kind of performance overall, I feel. So it's going to be interesting to see how we kind of cope today. Obviously, they've gone with this kind of very compact in the middle formation. The reasoning behind me putting on Thompson and sacrificing a striker is that when you play 4-4-2, if they have one centre attack in mid, it can cause your centre-backs problems, particularly if they've got two men ahead of that centre attack in mid. With them having the one centre forward and then three players very narrow in the centre, uh, it's going to require the likes of Sampa, who's playing ball winning midfielder today and Thompson who's an anchor man in front of the back to to really you know mark these guys out of the game and try and relieve a little bit of the pr uh, pressure that without doubt will come upon our defence today at, away so it's going to be tough Man City are top of the league as well although Man City have got some games in hand due to our poor form as you can see we slipped to 10th uh, as it stands you know we scored the same amount of goals as we've conceded we've pretty much won and drawn the same amount of games we're a mid-table team at best now, but this is a good opportunity for us to push forward and hopefully you know, turn our season around going into the second half. We showed last year how much a season can change in the space of, kind. well, I suppose after January. Obviously, at the start of January last year, we were top of the league home and dry. And by the end of it, we were finishing eighth, I believe, in the end last year. So there's time for us to turn our season around yet, and it's up to us to kind of do it today against a Manchester City side who are very strong. So I'm going to tell us to retain possession and then I want us to hit the flanks. Um, obviously they're playing with their narrow midfield so hopefully, hopefully there'll be room for our kind of wide attacking midfielders to find some space and then hit them on the break. So that is the thinking behind that. So it's going to be interesting to see how we go and they've got a penalty. Who would have thought? Can we save it? Of course we can't. I swear every time I do one of these commentaries over a game, it results in a penalty. That might be down to the fact that it's always the Man City, Man U, Derby games where there seems to always be a penalty in FM for whatever reason. But that is really disappointing. Bokal giving it away 12 minutes in, that is not the start we wanted. I'm still hoping these tactics can come good for us. As I've said, they've got the narrow midfield. I'm trying to hit the flanks with our wide men. Try and absorb the pressure in the centre that's going to come from their narrow play style and hopefully hit them on the counter. Uh, as they try and get the ball forward so I'm going to tell the lads they've been unlucky because that always makes them perform well and then I'm going to tell the midfield that they've got what it takes and I believe in them I'm actually going to make some changes here um, I've come under criticism in my videos for my lack of um, what you call it my lack of um, oh, what's it called lack of tactical changes and for whatever reason when I'm doing commentaries I always forget to make subs, and that might sound really stupid. It's because I'm too busy rambling, if I'm honest. But um, no, I'm I'm gonna sort that out because like in regular games, I don't have a problem with it. But it's always when I'm watching it back or someone mentions it in the comments that I don't seem to do enough. So I'm gonna be switching to counter attack here. I want us to sit deep and then exploit the flank flanks when we can. And that's an insane save by Pavlenko there. So trying to hit them on the counter. They're all over us, as you'd expect. 69% of possession. That's pretty bad. But all it takes is one little opportunity for us to hit them on the break. And it could really make a difference for us. Um, but no, Man City are top of the league. This is never going to be an easy game. And this is the kind of opportunity we've been waiting for. Use the flanks. Hopefully, Jekko can work some space here. There's options in the centre. Ball comes in. Quirk back across. Save by the keeper. Unlucky there. But you could see the game plan coming in. That might be the one opportunity we get this game of that nature, the kind of chance that we've been looking for, and indeed it looks like it will be. Not long left now. There's not a lot I can change, really, because I just haven't got the options. Um, oh, can we defend this? We can. Unlucky there, though. You know, that was the game plan. Go up, get one chance. It's not going to be easy. Might seem a little bit negative for me to set up the way I have, but Man, U Man City just have simply such good attacking presence that with my kind of young and inexperienced kind of defence, I felt it was always going to be necessary for me to play with at least two kind of defensive mentality centre mids. This 4-1-1 uh, hasn't actually served too badly. Obviously, it lacks the presence going forward, and that's clear by this game, the fact we've only created four chances. A lack of possession is probably down to our direct play style. But all in all, not a bad result. And to see Garfield Thompson, the anchor man, get man of the match really highlights what a role they did. Um, I'm kind of curious to look at the stats for this game, actually, just because... Um, in terms of individual players, because I'm kind of curious how Garfield Thompson did. Um, where is he? He is the sixth one down. It's a bit annoying, that. So, 
I mean, you can see here, pass completion, is that passes? Pass attempts and then completed, I guess. You can see where the real problem was. We couldn't really find any opportunities. Um, Garfield Thompson with 16 interceptions, um, 11 headers won and 12 headers attempt. So we just had that physical presence here there. And as you can see, he cut out the ball so much. Exact same as Bokau, actually, who had 11 interceptions for a deep line playmaker. That's pretty impressive stuff. And then Sampa, the ball winning midfielder, getting 23 attempted tackles and winning 17. That's pretty crazy stuff. It really shows how important the centre mids defensively set up the way I set them up was. I knew that it was going to be tough there. 1-0, you know, we shut down their threats. We just couldn't take that opportunity that came our way at the end, which is what I was kind of gambling on. All in all, though, 1-0 defeat away to the Etihad isn't actually that bad a performance. Um, obviously, disappointing to lose to a rival, but not bad in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think that just about sums it up for today's episode. Just a quick look at the finances, because I know I've not done that in a little while. We're minus £8 million. Uh, we've got a set to come out with that much money. I have a feeling that some of this will balance out when the players go out. I can't exactly remember when you, when you sell players outside the transfer window. I think the money comes in once they've actually left, in case they fail their medical right at the end. Don't quote me on that, but the finances should be healthier than that soonish. Um, but no, other than that, not not too bad in the grand scheme of things. Good little performance by the entire squad. Um, just couldn't really take that one opportunity that came our way. Uh, so yeah, guys, if you've enjoyed the episode, as always, you know, give the video a like. Uh, let me know if you're looking forward to this kind of pack that I'm working on. Uh, it should be really useful for you guys, I hope. It'll be like a big resource thing. Uh, because I don't have the permission to distribute stuff like the face pack and uh, stadium mega pack that I use, um, there'll just be download links for them within the pack. But if there's anything that I can personally add to the pack that you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, give the like video a like if you enjoyed, as always. Um, Lot, lots to cover this episode. I did cover a lot, so hopefully it was of use to you. Maybe you'll answer in you. I doubt it. My newbie manager ways are, are to be ignored. <laughs> Wait, what am I saying? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm out. I'm rambling now. It's me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>